Tell me what you see when you look at me. Do you see another brother lost in these streets looking for his soul? Trying to find my soul. Or do you see another brother searching for lost souls in these streets? A street soldier. A street soldier. Here to help you get that chip off your shoulder, warm your colder days, and sober your drunken ways, and find a way to help you get over these hurdles placed in our path. Yeah. And this is not meant to amuse you. This is for all those who have questions but are afraid to ask. I won't be afraid. I won't be afraid. Times get hard, you lose your way. Open your mind and hear what I say. This is a message for the hard and the soft. To those who tune in weekly and to those who keep an eye out for 8 p.m. on Sundays and turn their radios off. The truth hurts. The cloth has been pulled. We're walking around half dead. Use this show as your IV. Alive and free is a new movement. We've achieved self-destruction. A street soldier promotes self-improvement. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. Streets couldn't be no colder. So I gotta be a soldier. It shouldn't be this hard for me. Even when it seems so hopeless, I gotta keep my focus. I'm glad to be alive and free, yeah. I've been telling people, and they have been watching it, and they have been blown away. As, as we all have uh, rigged the voter suppression playbook. I got one more and then I'll be right with you. Okay, folks, give me. Okay, all right. I have text all the folks to come in. I'm sure they will join us. I'm praying that they will. Um, just to show you how timely this, 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 this thing is around this election. I just want to mention a couple of things that that uh, from the from the news. Uh, that's how crazy this election is. <clears throat> they arrested a 19-year-old. Apparently, we know about the one who's going to kidnap, you know, try and kidnap uh, the, the the governor of Michigan. But they, apparently, they arrested a 19-year-old who plotted to kill uh, Joe Biden. <laughs> That's, that's going on right now. A, a poll worker uh, was back east was, refired, was fired for telling uh, voters to turn their Black Lives Matter t-shirts inside out. Is that that's that. Right now. And probably the one that makes the most sense for what we're talking about tonight is uh, there are poll workers being trained to show up and, and, and spy, I guess watch, and there are some even filming uh, people voting uh, a mere fears of voter fraud. So if we can get through November 2nd without any a uh, whole bunch of craziness, don't want third, excuse me. Well, I don't know if we will be able to do that, but I'm hoping. But it does certainly fit in with what we're talking about. This film is right on time as we move into the last few days of this 2020 election. And joining us once again to discuss what we see is discussed voter, voter suppression is our panel back from last week, Campfield Taylor. What's up? What's up, Campfield? What's up? Good to see you again. Back from last week, Malcolm Mobley. Malcolm, what's up? What's up? Uh, Lowell Davis. Is Lowell Davis here yet? And Lowell's not here? No, nope, not yet. <laughs> yeah, uh, mm, 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 he was excited. All right. New to the panel tonight. New to the panel tonight uh, because Derek Butler could not be here. And um, I must add that Yuri Clark, who was all here last week, because I want to bring back the same folks, also texted me and said she had something that came up with the family. She had to bow out. But new to the panel tonight is the one, the only, the lovely, the beautiful. Adrian Riley, my sister. What's up, Adrian? Press the button and say hi. Wait, wait a minute, hold on. That was funny. Unmute. Me and Anne were both waiting to hit the heart button. Did you see those simultaneous hearts pop up? Oh yeah, my goodness. That unmute. is so funny. Anne, tell her to unmute. 
All right, let's unmute you, Adrian. Oh, one more. Hi, everybody. Nice there to be are, here. Hey there. How are you? So good to see you. Did you see yeah. those hearts pop up? Bam. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, so we love Adrian, and and I, I have known her for like forever. We went to college together. I love her. I love her family. You know, her husband. We all were in, in definitely, and this has been a, a wonderful ride being being uh, being friends um i don't know why she picked me but uh, i am the godfather godfather to her oldest daughter see she still don't know why see her shaking her head i don't know why he <laughs> but adrian thank you thank you so much in all the years of the show this is the first time you've been on it right i think so, I think so. yeah so yeah, yeah. yeah. You're looking good. Got the hair. Yes, you look oh, fabulous. Good. I had to comb my hair because you know it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> well, really, I, I, thank you, and 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 before I get to you, let me get Lowell in. Lowell, you're back. You made it. You made it. Good to see. You. Good to see you. Bro. Okay, Lowell Davis is back again. He was here last week. So, um, I, I, we're looking at this film. We're talking about. Uh, voter suppression it is real um and when i first saw it i said oh i got to do the show on this um and uh the, the uh, canfield and malcolm and lowell were here last week with us and then adrian i texted you and told you about it and you went and watched the whole thing so um pretend you haven't seen all of it but because we're going to discuss at least the first part of it uh but let me just start with you know from each of you and let's start with uh Lowell just your reactions from from watching the film last week just your thoughts and, and in fact Lowell I, you you also went and watched the rest of it I told y'all don't do that but you did it anyway I understand you were just too excited but your thoughts and feelings from what you saw last week watching this our conversation and our conversation on this film all right well anytime I I watch something or read something uh, it's a lot of work for me because I have to watch or read, you know, two to three other uh, documents mm. or videos in order to get a better understanding of what I'm uh, learning and uh, intaking. Um, so in watching all of the the rest of the video, uh, again, we'll it talk just, about the rest of it because we're going to watch the rest of it tonight. Just talk about what you saw last week if you can, and more of your okay. feelings. I know it's hard to compartmentalize. I got that, but I don't want you revealing any secrets. <laughs> All right, just just a little bit. But okay, so in reviewing um, what we discussed and what we watched from last week, um, really just a, a lot of feelings of, of disappointment and, mm -hmm. uh, gosh, um, really un. Why well, I can't say unlearning, but just seeing what is in play what we're up against mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. a feeling of i don't want to say defeat because i, I never want to feel defeated i want to feel like we're defeated as a people but i feel like we're up against something that a lot of people aren't really taking into account and right. just upon conversations i had even just this evening uh with people on how they're um how they're feeling about voting and how they're feeling about this upcoming election uh, a lot of people are just are still misinformed and uneducated, right. and that that alone disturbs me because we're the election is less than two weeks away, right. and if people are still un, uneducated and uninformed of what they're voting on, telling them to vote isn't enough. You know there has to be more voter education. Um, so I'll, I'll leave it at that and uh, let the next person. That's a good opening. Okay, can't feel. Uh, your, 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 your takeaway from last week. Uh, I just, I just felt it was, uh, it was a shame. It was, it was a doggone shame. <laughs> uh, but, but for the, for what I, what I will also say is I, I feel that, uh, uh, of course it was a lot of, uh, it's a lot of lying that's involved. So, the, the bad thing about it is, is people are learning from the highest level of government how to lie. Mm. And, it's, mm. and it's children mm. uh, 
of all ages are learning how to look somebody straight in the face when asked the question and lie straight to their face about it. And that's a sad, sad thing. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Uh, that's the, that's, that's the part of it that I, that, that really, uh, it, it kind of takes you, takes a person back. You know what I'm saying? You, you know, a person is not genuine about what they're, what they're saying. So. Okay. Malcolm, your thoughts about last year and you're the, you're the, you're the youngest member of the crew here, but you know, we, we've always specialized in having family discussions because this affects the entire family. And you know, in fact, we probably have more discussions with our young members of the family than we do with the rest of them because that's what we work with all the time. But thank you once again for joining us from the East Coast. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're on Morgan State's campus, and it's a big deal for you to do this. So your your thoughts and feelings about what you saw last week? Yeah. Um. Thanks for having me again, Dr. Marshall. And I say my thoughts and feelings. First of all, let me just say this. Yeah, I, I used to have hair like that. Your hair looks so good. I mean, just I used to have <laughs> gone. Okay, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. Nah, I just picked it out before the show. I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't get on here and misrepresent myself. But uh, <laughs> but last year, um, last week, actually, I wanted to correct something. Last week, I said it was. Uh, I described it as, as shocking, and I realized after I said it that I was incorrect because that kind of implies that this is something new, and you know that's. It, um, minorities in this country have, have, have always had their voices suppressed. So I just wanted to clear that up. But um, it's just, it's interesting to see um, right now how many like fronts people are fighting on, you know, uh, like on top of voter suppression, like, you know, as far as the coronavirus, you know, you got it's just so many things happening in the world right now, and it's this. And it's, it's um, I was watching this. I was I was watching you guys earlier before we, we even started, and it made me think of when I was actually sitting in Omega on the day of the election in uh, November eighth, twenty sixteen, right. and like how that all unfolded. And it's just it's just yeah, it's interesting. I, I don't want to talk too much right now, but yeah. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Adrian, you saw it for the first time. You went and saw it, so you you probably give me an overall. I mean, I mean I, well, anyway, you say what you want to say, baby. Just just your thoughts and feelings about uh, knowing that we're going to at least see half of the film tonight. But uh, go right ahead. Go right ahead. Some of the some of the feelings I got were um, like anger <laughs> um, and like anger that how did we let this slip away? Why did we get so comfortable right. and think that, oh, we're over the hump? So some of it is it's just anger that we didn't stay on top of things. How, how did they outslip us? How did we just let this happen? Do you mind if I, you know, you mind if I read your, uh, your text to me after you watch it? You <laughs> said, Why? Now I'm angry and depressed. You know what's happening, but to see it broken down makes me want to go work for Stacey Abrams. <laughs> and I thought that said it very, very well. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, we just, it's like we always have to be on guard. We can't, yeah. we yeah. can't be comfortable. And there's so much to do because we're trying to survive in our own life and for our own families. So, um, yeah. but I'll leave it at that. I had other thoughts, but. We'll, we'll get to them. <laughs> Lady Estelle. You saw it for the first time last week, and if we could have just captured you and all you back, it was something. Go it's ahead. A combination of, of like Kenfield was saying, low down, dirty, doggone shame. <laughs> I mean, and and the anger, I mean, the 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 historical anger comes up for me, and and the absolute absolute disgust with the fact that. We have people in positions, in trusted positions, and they cannot be trusted. Mm. Mm. They lie, they cheat, and they put the light on us like we are the ones with the problem. 
And that just makes me crazy <laughs> in my high seat. So yeah, that's, that's what I'm left with. It's like, really, really, the lack of integrity is just, just incomprehensible to me. And the expectation for integrity from others other than themselves. I got, I got, mm. yeah, so that's what I was left with. Again, a reminder. That's right, a reminder. <laughs> mm -hmm. And you want to comment or? or uh... well, I'll share what, um, you know, what they are sharing in the Facebook chat right now. Um, Andre Wright said that he had to go and watch the rest of the documentary after <laughs> last week's show, which right. I think is just really important. And I just think Street Soldiers is, just really unique in that way where we get to have this conversation and discussion and you know we're not alone and we get to really address what's wrong right what's what's not right in society and um i just it, i guess the movie makes me sad because i feel like we need to take care of each other and um it, it yeah it, it's just really upsetting um and i just wanted to share that Deacon Chapman and Dirk and Brendan Bates are also in the chat room. So thank you for watching. I think, you know, this is such a topic that um, really reaches all different generations. And so it's wonderful to have everyone here with us. My feelings were, you know, this is, we're talking about the right to vote. This is, a, this, the, everything in this so-called, and I'm, I shouldn't even see, that's how bad it's gotten for me. I said so-called democracy. <laughs> Because it feels like they're trying to make it undemocratic, right? It's based on the right to vote. I mean, everything. And, you know, looking back at the history, the 14th Amendment, the 15th Amendment, the Voting Rights Act of 1965, the fundamental principle of American democracy is, is the right to vote. And uh, actually, you know, going through that history of the show, they always tried to keep it away from folks. They've always tried to keep it away from folks. And folks, you know, uh, you know, first blacks, then women, and you know, it's, it's like this whole uh, all many create created equal. You know, liberty and justice for all was always not true, and people not really for all. and not at all true. And then for folks to try and take that away and continue to take it away, and I guess the first thing that hit me was that this latest effort started after you know President Obama won, uh, won the election in 2008. And uh, Jeffrey Wright said, I think very accurately, that folks are worried about the browning of America. And that is, that's a hell of a statement, worried about the browning of America. And, the, and, and this very, and this is the other thing stuck me, sophisticated and well thought out effort to develop a playbook. <laughs> You know, they may not call it a playbook, but I think it certainly plays comes out that way to to undermine uh, uh, everybody's right to vote. Uh, and when we've all all of us who have been close to this in the past, we've known about poll taxes and literacy and all of that stuff. And, you know, our grandmothers and great grandmothers and grandfathers had to face that. And to see that renewed in a very different way is really very, very painful. And and you're right, you're right. We gotta, you know, we, we can't never rest because they're gonna come, they always coming for you. They you certainly can't, you. can't take for granted that, that they're keeping their word. Thank you. You gotta you're double check, make sure that they are. And, and AJ and I did watch that YouTube. That was very good. So we're gonna, last week we, we, we looked at the first three tactics used uh, in the play, three tags in the playbook, red mapping, and and this one I didn't know about at all. I really didn't know about red mapping and the amount of money been to it. And, and that whole red mapping effort, which then led to, and I knew a little bit about gerrymandering and redistricting. You know, I've heard that. I've heard that they do that, and but then to see it, them actually drawing lines, and, and to learn about the, the, the tactics, packing and cracking, that was like. Oh man, these people have got this down to a science. And then the the attack on uh, weakening the Voter Rights Act through voter suppression laws. And I, if there was a highlight that I saw last week, it was a 90 year old sister who, like, you know, said, "Look, who 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 
who went to jail back with Dr. King or marched with Dr. King and then was back up again. Like, you know, I, 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 I'm, I'm sick and tired of being tired, sick and tired. That was, you could just hear it coming from her voice and I'm ready to go again. So that my <laughs> the most beautiful thing. In a walk, right. This beautiful right. thing. All right. Let's debrief on <laughs> Mrs. Stell, you just sunk lower in your chair. <laughs> so, let's debrief on these latest tactics in the voter suppression playbook and uh voter fraud, uh, which they is calling the big lie, and voter roll purges. And this one is so now. I mean, it's today, tomorrow, it's all the way up, to, it's right now. I mean, um, okay, who wants that at first? Just your, your, your thoughts about this particular tactic. Who wants to go first? Or are you just so stunned and numb? You're like me. Okay. I guess I have to do what we do in lady sales class. Call on somebody. Can't feel you go first. <laughs> Your thoughts about these so, two. Uh, yeah, thanks. I, I'll, I'll say something about uh, Mr. Michael Heyer. <laughs> so, first of all, I think I might jokingly have to blame this on women. This man needs a girlfriend. Cause he got way too much time on his hand. <laughs> Don't blame it on. <laughs> he got way too much time on his hand. You ladies, y'all need to be more friendly to these old men. Oh God! And help them out, and don't don't just <laughs> just be nice to him, cause he wouldn't even be out there if he had a girlfriend. <laughs> but I'm gonna just say <laughs> this. There's a reason that there. brother doesn't have a girlfriend. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this, this race car thing the cold part about when people when pe whenever people say race car basically what is happening is they are attempting to compartmentalize and minimize uh something that's very serious which is racism to some sort of card game mm. this is not a card game mm, good point you know what I'm saying? If you're being racist, you're just being racist. And basically, racism uh, is a systemic thing. And it, it has to do with uh, denying people access to more than voting, but jobs and just uh, life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. It's, it's just, it's just all, all of this stuff is wrong. Um, also, the, the verbiage. One thing you got to look at is the verbiage that these, these folks use um uh most specifically this guy has spoke about cockroaches now we know when he said cockroaches we already know what he actually meant to say but he used the word cockroaches right so you know they they they're using different covert terms um for their their base so they can they say certain things in semantics uh, where it would sound like okay, this sounds right. Like like even their project, the voter integrity project. Right. Now you would think you would think that okay, uh, voter integrity that sounds like that's supposed to be something that's good, but it's a covert like little dog whistle thing to their to their uh, to their base to say hey, this is how we're going to restrict voter access to this and this is what we're going to name it okay you understand so whenever they begin to talk about these things it's kind of like with a wink and a nod hey this is we need to get this done so you know what i'm saying we can get these folks off the roll so we can make sure this we get this thing pushed through all right and Got that's it. basically what it was what it is low <laughs> Your thoughts on these two tactics in the playbook? <laughs> well, you know, it, it's more of the same, um, e evilistic uh, tactics. And again, Kenfield brought up the point, you know, uh, how does this guy have this much time? I mean, I know he introduced himself as a, as a disabled vet. So 
obviously he's getting some you know money from the government in order to carry on these activities but uh but gosh i mean really um you know there's other people aside from him that are probably doing the same thing with this much uh zeal uh behind it and how are they able to you know i mean this is honestly a full-time job um you know to disenfranchise voters and um you know they, they mentioned uh busing or yeah busing in people uh illegal voters uh i've, I've never seen that um i i almost want to guarantee that you know 99 percent of america's population has never seen that um if you spent you know a full day at the polls um but then you know that, that it, it just makes me think of um you know, all these protests that have been going on the past several months, especially here in Oakland, uh, cities like Milwaukee, my, my hometown. And, um, you know, I definitely know that there's proof of protesters being bust in. And, you know, there's, there's really nothing uh, behind that. No one's, you know, questioning that. Uh, there was even a, a situation where um, someone unloaded a, a a bunch of bricks, you know, before protests happened. And they were just sitting nicely on a pallet. And, you know, again, that that's something that hasn't been questioned. No one's been prosecuted behind it. Whereas someone who's bringing this amount of attention on something and nothing is coming from it, I feel they should be prosecuted mm. for, for wasting time of the people. Mm. Mm. Good point. Malcolm. Yeah, so um, the, the the I want to say the the funniest thing was when the uh, I, it was like a panel of people discussing the people being bust in, like they couldn't even they couldn't even agree on what the lie was. It was it was just so funny seeing them kind of just struggle to to tell that lie. Was, like I wouldn't describe it as bus loads per se, but. but um, yeah, this is just wow, it's, uh, another way. And uh, like uh, Mr. Davis just said, it's um, it, it's kind of like a full time job. You know, like how much effort they're putting into to you know suppressing your vote. Like after like the the voter purging laws. So if if you like if you moved and like you get like a notice in the mail, like they can't even forward it to your new address, and like. And then you have to go through to the voter registration process all over again. Right. And it's just, it's, it's so, it's so deep. There's so much to it. And it, it's not even just that, like, it, it's not even like in-person voting. Um, I just saw on the news, like the, um, the other day, uh, who Stacy, uh, Stacy Abrams of all people, her, her, uh, her, uh, mail-in ballot, the, the return envelope, it came sealed shut. And she even tried to steam it open, um, and it, it still wouldn't work. So it's, it's so many ways, um, and it's, it's just it's amazing. I'm not amazing Thank in a bad way. <laughs> Thank you, Adrian. Yep, you're still muted, honey. You're still muted. Yeah, I there said you go. everything that's been said. Um, it reminds me that how the world we live in now is if you just repeat the lie enough, it becomes the truth. They just yeah. keep repeating it as yeah. if that'll make it true. And so, I mean, how, how do we get to the point where there's no, there's no, uh, nothing to prove there's any fraud in voting? But, but they've repeated it enough in different levels. And like you say, naming it, these fancy names, it seems so, so uh, honest. Um, and it's just the world we live in now. And then to think that you're, you're you could be purged from voting, your voter registration is purged, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. So if, you know, if you kind of slip and don't vote a couple of times, that might be a reason they purge, and then you, you don't even realize it. And then, then they, on top of it, they don't explain it in this clip, but 
every state has different rules and different laws. I mean, it's so confusing. So I, I just, you know, here in California, at least you could, you could, one way I try to stay on top of it is I, I signed up for absentee voting. So I know if I don't get it, something's wrong. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then I can, I can take my time and vote at home, but it, it's just, it's just amazing what they're doing. And, and, and it's just being done like, and nobody's doing anything about it. In fact, when, when some of these cases get appealed and go to the Supreme Court, now we're even more worried what will happen. Right. I mean, yeah. they're just gonna, they're just gonna disintegrate the Voting Rights Act. And, and these cases are being ruled on daily, almost every day. I see some about some state, Pennsylvania, North Carolina, Florida, Georgia, you know, uh, Pennsylvania, uh, yeah, yeah, just, just yeah, up, up, to, they're up to the very day, there are cases coming down about what you can do. Were we asleep at the wheel? I mean, how did we let all these federal judges and Supreme Court justices get appointed? Where, I mean, you know, it's just, it's very scary. It's just. Lady Estelle. You got unmute. I think everybody's pretty much said, except for a few curse words that I would like to say. My first time, I didn't want to. Oh, I, I agree with Malcolm. When they were busy trying to come up with, uh, well, he saw him. Well, I really can't say that I saw. I, I wouldn't quite say it was. I'm like, you know what? But you know, what were the shows? Remember the documentaries that Michael Moore did? He did a little skit, and I'm sorry, I just have to. Do, he did a little skit, talked about uh, America, what it means to be American, and he, he, it was all about scared white people. If you frighten them enough then they will take the lie and they will make that lie true. They'll convince themselves that it's true. They, they don't have to see it. I know it's there. Well, how do you know it's there? Have you ever seen, well, he saw, well, I saw a bus, but I don't know if there was really, I didn't see a lot of people on the bus, but did you see that other bus? Yeah, it was yellow and it had kids. I mean, you know what I'm saying? But they will make, they will make themselves be right despite how wrong it is. I mean, it's just, it's just uh, unconscionable to me. Unconscionable to me. Um, probably the best way to put it, and like you've all said, they're responding to a problem that doesn't exist. I mean, it's like I said, you know, there's people from Mars are here and with no proof of people from Mars are here. Actually, I've seen science, I've seen Twilight Zone episodes where they said people from Mars are here, or the War of the Worlds going all the way back to Orson Welles, and, you know, they're here, the people, pan, they're here, but if nobody, there's no evidence of voter fraud. When Obama say point oh 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 oh, he ran out of zeros, right, <laughs> before he got to the two. 40 out of Got numbers, 15, and out, right? there is no, and, and we know, and this comes out every day, and every time Trump says, they're not even saying, there's no, but now they got people poking under every tree, under every stone, every and every, and, and this is going to be right now. After no, you know, and he says, "Is if if I don't win, it's rigged, right?" That's what he said. It's not a rig. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. It's rigged. So this one right here is the one he's going to use. I mean, he's already said it. He's told his people to show up. They've told people now that they got people filming voters right now. You ain't supposed to be filmed while you vote. So. Out of all the ones in the playbook, this is one that is the most active, will be most active on November 3rd and will be the one used to contest. I mean, he already said that he would have won the election, you know, if three million illegals didn't vote for, with no ever. I mean, look, he comprised their whole commission to look for voter fraud and had to disband the damn commission. But if you can plant, like you said, Lady Sale, the thought, all of you, the plot in people's head that there is a problem when there is not one. They'll do, they'll, they'll go to any place to find something and for, and, and what we got to be concerned about to make up something that doesn't exist in order to justify, that's the concern here, is the making up something that, that has, I mean, they've been, we've been voting what, since seven, I guess 1789 when the constitution came in and we've been voting ever since then. 
This ain't never come up. This ain't come up in a hundred, two hundred and whatever years. Suddenly now there's a problem with, with, with voter fraud. And well, it wasn't voter fraud when he when he got elected. <laughs> oh no, he already said if I win, there's no fraud. He said that. I mean, he's talking about rigged. He rigged <laughs> This I mean, to me, and that it, was definitely rigged. This, what, this yeah. One thing, this one, thing you, one thing you can say that may, maybe in 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 some crazy way he's telling the truth because he is attempting to rig the election. Because he's doing it. Oh, he said he is. No, 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 no. He isn't telling the truth. He backs in the stuff that it might turn out to be, but he ain't telling. He don't. He hasn't told the truth since I don't know. I don't know when the last time he told the truth. Maybe. But but this one, this is the one that got me most of all. I mean, this is like creating, and like you say, Adrian, you say a lie, you say it long enough, it becomes true when there's no, there's there's nothing there. There's nothing there. And he's going to use this to scare people completely. You know, take people off roads, be intimidated. But I mean, this is the one, I mean, they, they're worried about militias turning up, all of this. Because he's invented this thing of, you know, dead people are voting and this is voting and this is it. And it, it, that is the one. That is the one that we need to be a look on the lookout for in 10 days. Because it is incredible, incredible. And he's told his people to show up for the poll. You heard him. I'm telling you all to show up to make sure there's no fraud. Now, we better be very patient. I will say this, and I think you will be. Because I know some brothers, you be showing up, they they be like, <laughs> you know, calm down, brother, just vote and get the hell out of there, because they just trying to mess with you. You know, I didn't have to tell you a few people, because I know some people, you know, you, you show up messing with them, they'll be like, no, nah, you can't do that, just vote and leave. And which is probably the other reason, really, vote early, right? I mean, you can vote early, you can really avoid being watched. You know, even though they are watching people, like so, when you drop your vote in. Your ballot in last week. Was anybody out there watching you? I'm curious. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Good. Of course. So maybe that's the way to go. Vote early, get it in, drop it off. And uh, when the poll watchers come, they, ain't gonna have, they won't have you to watch. And there are a record number of votes being cast in this election early. Um, they are. So and it's amazing. Like Florida in 2016, the early voting numbers was 44,000. And then um, as of now, they have about uh, uh, 250,000 votes. North Carolina, they had 25,000 in 2016. Right now they're at about 200,000. And Michigan, mm. 7,000, only 7,000 people voted early. And right now that they're at 145,000. Yeah. So, I yeah. mean, people are taking this serious and I, I just think that's really important. and. I hope they're voting <laughs> for Biden. <laughs> well, now you know. Now you know. You know we know, but then when it's all packaged and seen together in one, and then when you sell these so-called well-meaning people, so-called well-meaning people, because maybe somehow they think they are doing a service to the country by passing out little leaflets. <laughs> it remind me of the Watchtower people hanging out. <laughs> Are you worried about voter fraud? Well, I never thought about it. Well, you should be thinking about it, but watch how I be thinking about it. Well, you know what exists. I mean, you know, he's just stirring up something. It reminds me of little kids at school. You know, your friend after you, are you this is insane. It's insane. It's in the playbook. Watch it. Be ready. Oh, okay. Did anybody notice when they were talking about the the voter fraud and how somebody would pretend to be somebody else and they took the disguise off and it was a brown person. <laughs> I thought, really? Do you know who, who's rigging? The ones who's rigging ain't brown, okay? But they want you to believe that the ones who's not being honest about voting are brown people. I mean, just, that, just, just the, the subliminal, which really isn't subliminal to me message that they're sending is is pretty it's pretty stark and, and to amplify what you said i think it maybe was the last the congressional the last two-year election which is i guess it would have been 18 there was some some funny stuff going on in north carolina 
and it was actually the Re Republicans that were doing it. So, <laughs> and it wasn't black Republicans. <laughs> so, you know, when you point the finger out there at nobody out there, the one you should be pointing the finger at is, <laughs> is yourself. Okay, and let's move on. Let's look at the next tactic, couple of tactics in the voter suppression playbook. And Ann, if you got any comments in the chat you want to throw in be, before we go in, maybe we should do that because uh, uh, this is, if you, if you. Okay, yeah, I mean, there's a lot, they're, they're having a good discussion. We have Tamisha Walker in the chat room right now too. And she always has something to say, which is great. And right now she's just like, wow. You know, like when you watch this stuff, you know, and that's that's how I feel. <laughs> um, and then um, Gennaro Baltrip, he's there he's saying matter of the matter is it still matters. So mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. then I have a Michael Mobley in there. Malcolm, do you know him? <laughs> yeah, that's my dad. So <laughs> oh, yeah. What's up, dad? It's like he got your boy, he got his boys back. <laughs> OK. We're nearing the end, and I think we've probably seen enough, and we got about 15 minutes left in this show. So, um, I mean, so the next, the last two, or the you've seen the last three, which is voter intimidation, voter ID all over again. Let me just say, I am from the state of Missouri, and if I went back, and I'm born in St. Louis, so according to this, if I went back, and wanted to vote, I couldn't just show my driver's license. I'd have to apply for an ID in the state of Missouri to vote in the state of Missouri. Now, just think if that was all 52 states, you'd have to get an ID in each state to vote in the state. Um, I didn't know, I mean, that's funny because I'm, you know, I'm St. Louis and Lady Sills from Kansas City. So I guess you didn't know that either. Right? <laughs> now you couldn't just go back, you have to, Get an ID. So, anyway, Adrian, you can start with this one. Go right ahead. Huh? <laughs> I don't know. Um, one of the things that it it brings me back to when I see things like this is, um, how we always knew that this was out there, right. but how when uh, after Obama was elected. Um, th they hated it so much that a black man was elected to be president that it just brought everybody out. Everybody under the radar just came out, just came out from everywhere. And, and <clears throat> all of this, even though it was there, it, it got more intense and people got in positions to uh, embolden others to just to just unleash the hatred and the ignorance. Uh, and it just feels like, like starting all over again. We have to just start all over again. But the thing that gives me hope is young people like Malcolm mm -hmm. uh, and the other young lady you had last week. Every, every major change that ever happened from a movement in this country was led by young people by young adults. And I, I feel this generation, they're gonna, they're gonna figure out a way to turn this back around. Um, that's the only thing that gives me hope because otherwise it's just, it, it, you're just angry, frustrated and depressed. Um, but they, I mean, all of this is just hatred. <laughs> so I don't know. Can't so, feel? Yeah, I mean, it's it's uh, I I, I honestly I, I I feel good that a lot of the uh, the young people have uh, have got out there in the streets, like I said last year, um, because I I think they see all the BS that's going on, and um, how how these people are putting um, putting forward all these uh, these false narratives and whatnot, and um, while I'm on here, I just want to make sure that people. Uh, also, you can you can go and track your ballot. Right, at right. Ballot tracks. It's called. Uh, hold on, one second. I think it's, you go to. Yeah, it's called ballot tracks. 
um, and and basically track your ballot. Once you put your ballot in, um, you can you can track your ballot. And then also, if you have not voted yet, uh, go to uh, votersedge.org. When you go to votersedge.org, um, it talks about all the candidates in your specific area, as well as the ballot measures in your specific area. And I believe there's a link for Voters Edge on everybody's Secretary of State uh, website. So that that relationship between the Secretary of State and Voters Edge is kind of gives that website its uh, its validity. So I uh, just wanted to say that. Thank you, Malcolm. Um. It, it was the, the beginning of this segment that that was so crazy to me. Uh, it was the, the sheriff in that, yeah. in that town. <laughs> you know, yeah. she it's just she could be spending her time doing so much more. <laughs> but no, she's going door to door investigating people who put senior instead of junior on their ballot. <laughs> you know, and it's it's just it's, it's so, and, and the shackles, oh my God, the shackles. That's that's what did it for me. When she put leg restraints on a guy, you know, who, who put a misprint on his, on his ballot. And and the crazy thing is, why are we, uh, why is it such a priority to, to, you know, to enforce, like to enforce someone, you know, who's exercising that, you know, their right to vote, you know? And it's, it's like, that's not even like a bad thing. <laughs> it's, it's just so I don't know it's, it just shows where people's minds are and how backwards like people in power are you know and um, yeah it, it was, it was kind of disgusting but yeah that was, that was kind of my thoughts on that segment you know Malcolm we we, we, we grew up with sheriffs like that <laughs> We've seen that kind of sheriff before. Probably the most notorious one is Bull Connor uh, in Birmingham, Alabama. But there, there are sheriffs like that who personally take on a personal crusade that they're going to do whatever. You know, they just, in this case, it's, they're going to save America from these, all these illegal voters. And, you know, back then it was, there's always something. There's always something. And, and then they throw the full might of the law behind them. So, and they always got the same look on their face. <laughs> it doesn't matter if they're male, female. <laughs> you know, they got that same righteous, you know, uh, I'm gonna save it from these people, you know. Um, as uh, Leah still has a great line, uh, I don't mind and you don't matter. That's, she, that's a great line that she uses. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's sheriff. We know that sheriff when we see him. Right. Um, and they're so self-righteous. They really think they're doing everybody, the good old boys and the good old girls, a favor. Yeah. Glad you picked out the sheriff. Low. So I, I think you guys can read that. Uh, yeah. There we go. Group think. Group think. So that's something, that's a tactic that was involved in all these tactics, just to summarize um kind of what we've reviewed uh through the video and groupthink is a is a dangerous thing so if you don't know the definition of it please go look it up mm. um, but it's basically a tactic that the media uses that mm. is uh very prevalent and you you see it um because a lot of these people don't actually know that, like they think that they're doing good they, they they think they're working for the greater good but um a lot of them are just following what is is provided to them through uh, the media and friends and and people like that. So that's how people um, like that sheriff get get in power, uh, because you know people you know get the suggestion and they they don't really think for themselves. They're like, oh well, you know, so and so told me about it. They're trustworthy, uh, or, or so I know. So I'm just going to roll with that and not question it. Um. I would urge everyone to read a book by Dr. Claude Anderson called Powernomics. Uh, mm. Power is something that we discussed heavily in uh, 
the first uh, the first time that, that we went uh, last week when we started going through the voter suppression playbook and powernomics actually discusses uh, worthwhile tactics that we as a people can start implementing to combat uh, these things that are um, used against us. And um, gosh, yeah, uh, you know, all, all this makes me very upset, but it also urges me to um, not just leave it there, it, it urges me to action. And I think everyone after watching this uh, documentary uh, should be urged to action, uh, educated voting, uh, educating other, uh, your peers on, uh, on voting and how to uh, circumvent these tactics. Could I add to that? Yes, go ahead, sir. Yeah, it's very interesting that you said that because last, the last meeting we had, we were talking, we talked about, you know, how someone actually sat down around a table and they came up with, like, they just come up with these things, you know, like all these tactics. So, you know, like, it sparked, you know, the idea in mind, who, who is sitting at the table? <laughs> so, um, and my dad, he always mentions to me all these, you know, um, he's what he calls them think tanks. And he, he urges me to go look them up. So, and the ones that he mentioned to me off the top of my head are the uh, Heritage Foundation, Citizens United, and the Federalist Society. And I guess the way, like, according to Google, like, I guess the Federalist Society was the one or like this conservative kind of think tank that uh, is, it, it, I guess it plays a role in, it had a role in, um, like, I guess the conservative kind of judges, um, you know, and um, that kind of swayed the, or I guess like the case that I saw was the one on abortion. You know, women don't even get the right to like to choose what they can do with their body. Like that's, I don't know, it's, but that's like, that's the case that I kind of saw with with that particular think tank. But, but yeah, that's, that's, that's as far as I've gotten in like as to who's at the table. <laughs> but yeah, there's, I guess there's, there's more research to be done on that. But um, yeah, thanks for saying that, um, LD. That's, that just, that, that, that got me thinking last week. Yeah. Lady Estelle. You know, I mean, you know, this is the most ridiculous thing I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I mean, I mean, and then when they talk about God, you know, doing all of this in the name of God, I'm like, you know what, God, I'm sorry. They just <laughs> lying on you because I know you did not give them instructions to do this crap. And then when the guy is at the assembly meeting and he is trying to convince everybody to do the wrong thing and he's dressed up in his blue suit and the other guy is saying, well, then answer the question. Well, he can't answer is it clearly because you don't know, which means don't vote for that because that ain't right. This is. And they voted for him anyway. Why? Because he had on a blue suit? Because he was tall? What were they thinking? I don't get it. I mean, you got good information. You can't, nobody can give you any real facts, no real proof. And then you're just going to go with that. What's wrong with these people? That's what I got to say about it. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, and then yeah, I this, get down here from there. <laughs> well, it's, 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 as we get to the last few minutes, it's been revealing, obviously, you, you, you got to thank the people that made this film. Because the worst thing, you know, and I work with young people, the worst thing that we, I, the worst thing I can hear is that, you know, nobody ever told me that, or I didn't know, you know, and that's been, their line of reasoning for the stuff they got into. You know, I, I didn't know, nobody ever told me. Well, when you make films like this, our job is to let people know. Uh, and, and that's what this film is, is letting you know what's really going on. Now, now you know you can act accordingly, you can think accordingly, you, you can't say it doesn't. This. I mean, they just did this so well. Uh, and I think 
one of the things they did great in the film is, is they captured the people who really thought they were helping. <laughs> I mean, all the people really think I'm really trying to do something good, you know? Um, and so that, 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 that's always when you get that, the, the self-righteous people who really think they're trying to help the country. Um, and in the end, this is the most sacred thing. This is the right to vote. I mean, there's nothing more fundamental to this whole experiment or, you know, that they started back in 70, said they went to war with England for, you know, uh, was to give people a right to vote. And the fooling with this is like, this is as fundamental as it gets. It, I mean, you don't get this, you might as well go move to a dictatorship, you know, which, uh, and when you, when you, there, you don't get the right to vote. Um, so th this is, I can't think of anything better for all of us, everybody to watch right before a week from now, knowing that it's going to come up, knowing that the playbook will be executed, the claim will be made, the fear will be used. Um, but the one thing that, you know, we've been very good at, no matter what comes up, once we know, especially when we know it, now we kind of, you know, we may not show it's standing up to it and, you know, I, 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 I'm just going to, I'll end for me by just reading this from uh, this woman still waiting three hours after she showed up to vote in Savannah on Wednesday, County Morgan 75 wasn't taking any chances with her health months after suffering a stroke. She wore a mask and a plastic shield that covered her entire face. But Morgan said the importance of voting was drilled into her as a girl by great grandmother Sally Williams who was born a slave in 1950 and lived to be more than a hundred. Morgan felt compelled to vote early to register a support for Democrat Joe Biden over President Donald Trump. Quote, I won't let anything get in the way of me in this opportunity, said Morgan, who called coordinates an adult literary literacy program. I think when you have that in you, uh, you ain't letting them take nothing away from you. I mean, whatever you got to do, you're going to do. You're going to vote, you're going to show up, you're going to vote early, and you will fight so that this playbook uh, doesn't work. Um, um, go ahead, Adrian. Uh -huh. I was going to say, I was thinking when you read that and then thinking about Malcolm's uh, comment about the sheriff, I, I just want to remind all of us that we need to vote down ballot. <laughs> we need to vote for everybody, not just the president. And we, we need to vote in those elections in between when there's nobody exciting running because judges get picked, sheriffs get picked, uh, attorney generals get picked, you know, a whole bunch of people that affect your life even more than uh, the president sometimes. So, uh, you know, and, and there, there are lots of ways to find out about them. Like the League of Women uh, Voters, they have debates on local local people. I watched some of those and I'd never really done that before. I said, why well, haven't I done that before? You know, so um, we just got to vote. We got to educate ourselves about everybody that's running. I want to thank all of you for joining us. Uh, some of you for two weeks. This has been just, just, just wonderful. Um, I, you know, I don't know what to say, but Hey, don't let them take away our right to vote, period. That's it, that's what it bounces. to. Do not let them take that away. And if there's, as I know with all of us here and all of us watching and, you know, with, with, with every breath in us, we will fight, we will fight to keep the right to vote that we duly have is ours, period. And we let nobody take it away. So Adrian Riley, Malcolm, Mobley, Kent Field, Taylor, Lowell Davis. Thanks for joining Lady Estelle and I. We love you. And uh, let's see if we can have a party in a couple, in a week or so, right? <laughs> so good night, y'all. All right. Thank you. All right. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.